They got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems. I solve them. I run through the money. Depression be calling. Left all my blessings. I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Okay, so after that predicament this morning, I finally managed to get out and to do this POV. Um, but this time I am using a Canon M50. So a lot lighter than my usual setup, which is usually a Sony a7 III. Um, with a 24 to 70 mil on this is really compact really simple and easy to use um, and it's probably like the best budget bad boy camera that i can actually suggest to you um, it's got the standard kit lens on 15 to 45 and i'm going to see what i can get with this today now the overall vibe of today is it's kind of a little bit well a bit boring there's no like rain there's no like severe weather um, it's a bit of a whitewash sky so it means we're gonna to have to get a little bit creative with our shots. Stay creative, I'm gonna be looking for things like this, reflections, um, puddles if there are any, that type of thing. And uh, bam. Now there is a slight restriction with this camera and this lens, um, is it has a variable aperture. What that means is it goes from f35 up to f6.3 when you zoom into 45 mil. Now what that means is you're gonna to have to change around and play around with the shutter speed, and then also you're gonna to have to play around with the ISO a little bit if you're at that, that further end of the focal length at 45. But that's fine, we'll overcome them. That little uh, reflection shot from the phone booth was pretty sick. Um, but those are the type of shots we're going to be looking at and trying to get today. So a little tip I tend to do is if I've come to a location that I want to shoot, say it's here, I'm looking at Trafalgar Square like this, then I tend to look around. So I'll have a look to the right, see if there's anything that I can see that's creative or any reflections. There's a couple of windows over there I could potentially use. I look to the left. If I had a wider, um, if I had a, a more of a focal length, I could possibly use the arches as a frame. Um, but there's also this window here behind me. Now there's three windows here. There's one here and one here and one around the side. The one I'm looking and interested in is this one here. So if I get all the settings nice and good, I'm gonna punch it into 35 mil at f point f5.6 and one 320th of a second and i'm going to try and get trafalgar the trafalgar tower just kind of like poking out of the top i'm gonna to get one more and maybe climb it a little bit if i get told off then fuck it i don't care um i'm gonna throw it in manual focus as well okay sick I'm hoping I can pull that up in editing. If I did, then you can see on the screen. If I didn't, then you can also see on the screen that it didn't work. Plan is to walk up past Piccadilly, um, maybe head up towards Chinatown, that type of area. Um, and then on top of like looking for creative ways to use reflections and stuff like that, um, you can always search for stories. So images that are gonna tell a story, you know, portraits, street photography. Now in Trafalgar Square, you can actually walk along the side here and then look down on people on their everyday life and a little bit you know you're peering over the top of this wall here on people sitting on the benches now it does make for quite a cool photo i'm gonna have to try and get one down here without people getting shitty with me but hey that's whole part of it okay another thing i do love about this camera is the flip out screen it's amazing for vlogging honestly okay i have it on f 3.5 500th of a second and iso 100 Try and frame it all up nice. Bam, thank you, that'll do. See how that turns out in the edit. I'm gonna walk up towards Piccadilly now and see if we can get some more shots up that way. Smaller cameras do have their advantage and it's actually one of the reasons why I'm looking at getting a film camera is because when they're so small and compact, people don't tend to take as much notice of them. When I'm walking around with the Sony a7 III in my hand with a big lens, people kind of notice what you're doing and they're like, Hey, are you taking my photo? So it's kind of, you know, it's more inconspicuous. You can kind of get away with a bit more with this. Um, I do apologize for the wind. It is a little bit windy today, but not windy enough to create any uh, crazy images. Yeah, I've noticed a guy on his phone that sat in like a doorway. And I think it'd be a really cool portrait shot if I can get it. Just going to get the settings before I walk around the corner.
Okay, yeah, I'm very happy with that. I think that looks pretty cool. I think once I punch that in and post and crop it in a little bit, I think that'll look really good. I'm at Piccadilly now. I don't know if I'm going to spend much time here because I want to kind of keep going and keep walking up towards Oxford, take a right walk down there, get to uh, Chinatown eventually. Um, but I'm sure there's some characters on here I can try and get. Uh, maybe these Bing guys. Give it a go, see how it goes. Okay, there's one. Let's get one more. Okay, and while I'm here, um, I'm going to show you a little look down shot from uh, of Piccadilly. You have Piccadilly here, and then right this way, you have a place called Lily White's. Um, I'm going to go in there, you go all the way to the top, and I'll show you the look down shot. Okay, and as you come to the top of the stairs, there's like this window, and it overlooks. And you kind of have to lean over, and just go. <sighs> so sick. Okay, once I crop that and everything in post, you can see it on the screen. But that's a nice little, uh, nice little spot for you guys if you ever come to London. But it is a bit of a trek walking all the way up the stairs and then going all the way back down for one photo, but it's worth the shot. Before I went into Lily White's, I was taking a picture of these two guys just down here, um, the bin man. Um, but just as you go to Lily White's, there is this reflection here on, on this window, which actually looks pretty sick. So I'm going to try and get it, Let's see if I can line this up without getting me in the shot. Okay, sick. Right, let's move on. I'm really hoping because last night there was actually quite a bit of rain uh, that fell here in London. Um, and I was hoping there'd be more puddles about, but hey ho, it is what it is. We'll make it work anyway. Um, a really good way of getting like portraits of people like through windows is definitely like buses. Because, well, the person's on a bus, so they can't personally do anything about it. And secondly, uh, with like the double exposure of the glass, it makes it look really, really captivating. So I'm going to try and get one on Regent Street as I'm walking down. Okay. There is a bus coming. There is a bit of a traffic jam, so maybe I can get someone. Again, sorry about the wind, if you can hear it quite badly. Okay, did I get it? Did I get it? Did I get it? Okay, that's pretty sick. So as I took the photo, I tracked, I tracked the bus, so at least she was in focus. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so the next location is there's this alleyway just off Regent Street. There's a couple of them as you go up Regent Street, actually. Um, and I like to use them as a frame either for buses or um, for people that are walking past. So it just creates this really cool natural frame. And here I really like it because you have this like diagonal uh, shadow from the sun, which creates this really cool effect. And then also the same goes for this window here. So you have a reflection. So when you get a, a red bus or something go past, you can use the reflection from the window to get like a double exposure of the, of the red bus. Okay, there is a red bus coming now. I can see it in the other reflection in the other window. So as it comes out, three, two, one. Okay, so there's two there. There's the one of the bus, and then there's also the one of someone in a red jacket, which actually I prefer. So just use reflections in any way possible to just to give that extra edge. I mean, guys, if you've been following me a while, you already know that I use reflections a lot. Now I've come off the back of Regent Street onto um, Carnaby Street, and I'm gonna try and get some, I don't know, some, some portrait style, because a lot of people tend to come out on their breaks behind these buildings here and have a cigarette, and it does make for quite a cool photo. You can see a couple of people down here having their break, so I'm going to try and go the opposite side of the road and try and get, you know, a couple of shots. Uh, I think the guy in the doorway is kind of a nice framing, so like I said, I'm going to try and get the settings before I turn. So that should be okay. And Okay, how does that look? 
It looks so good with the framing. Okay, I'm really happy with that one. Once I like straighten it up, give it a little bit of a crop and post, we'll be, uh, we'll be in the money. So, well, you've already seen it on, on there. There's a guy sat over here on a box, which is quite cool. Okay, that one is really sick. I'm really happy with that one. So sick. But that's why I like areas like this because people are just doing their own thing. You know, they don't really see what's going on around them. They don't really care. They're just doing their own thing. And you kind of have to exploit that a little bit just to get the shot you want. So, and also don't be afraid of taking the photo. Like, if you think someone's not gonna be happy with it, then it is what it is. It's not actually illegal to take photos of people in public. So, Go for it. So there's a guy in here enjoying his pint. I'm just gonna try and get it. Kind of don't want. I don't want the the building. And there's so much going on in that photo because of the double exposure you've got obviously the guy picking up his pint and then you've also got the double exposure of the people walking in the streets so it makes it really like captivating and cool now although for a lot of people building work like this is really annoying um it's actually really good framing um because everything's very linear so it's not very curved you know that example is a perfect frame so if someone was to walk you know, if I had a, um, a bigger focal length on, I could get someone walking in that far distance and it'd be really like punched in and framed nicely. So just, although it might be you know, not very beautiful to look at in terms of um, an overall wide shot, when you use, if you use it to your advantage and frame the shot, then it's gonna give you a much better image. Literally testament to what I was just saying is you have this frame here, someone just put the frame. And you can use it as a frame, which is just... Which makes it look so much more captivating. Although it's just mundane and a bit shit, it does make it look kind of cool. And obviously the pattern on it is really cool as well. Unpopular opinion, but I actually don't like Oxford Street. Like it's very good for um, like shopping and shit like that. And sometimes photography in terms of like panning shots and stuff like that but that's not what i'm after today so i'm gonna go down kind of like the back routes to see if i can find some people you know on their breaks sitting in corners or weird locations in like the back alleys of london so hey i don't know if it's gonna work we'll see how it goes okay so on one of the back streets here i've got a gentleman over there sitting next to the red door just having his cigarette which looks absolutely sick with the framing I think for the Sony, um, there is one lens I would definitely like to get, and that would be the 70 to 200, just purely on the fact that it's gonna help me with these types of shots. Now I'm gonna head to Chinatown and that area now to see if I can get some, um, you know some because through the windows and stuff like that you can see people cooking and you can see like um, people that are eating and stuff like that and it's, it's kind of cool it's really catchy so i'm going to head towards there now and hopefully get some decent shots so yeah three two one chinatown okay and chinatown so there is so many opportunities in chinatown to get some decent photos now over the last couple of weeks uh the uk shooters have been 
holding a competition um, where you can win a bunch of like stuff from Colombia. Anyway, I entered that a year ago um, and the photo that won was actually from Chinatown. So you could definitely get some really, really good captivating shots. There's actually one over here of the guy actually plating up his food, which is just, yeah, money. Let's see if we can get it. Yeah. See if that comes up in post, but he moved a bit quicker than I wanted him to. Um, but we'll find another one. There'll be plenty, 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 plenty of shots here. Okay. Can I sign? Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your day. The shot I actually got previously here that won me that competition was down this little street actually. So it was just down here. There are loads of building works now, but there was a puddle just down here on the left hand side. And it reflected all of this, like all of the lanterns and the back house of horse and dolphin yard. Um, and it was just, yeah, it was like a mirror. It was great. It was amazing. It looked perfect. Um, I also got another one down that street of a, of a dude smoking, which was really sick. Okay, let's see if we can get one. Again, I'm going to do the whole get the settings before I turn. And then, bam. Okay, so there's a, a dude just here looking at a, a pitching, and I think it's just really cute, so I'm going to try and get it. I really like the the shadows of the like the lanterns and everything kind of casting over his face which looked really really sick. Let's see if I can find any more. Moving on. I'm gonna head down towards um, kind of like the touristic areas now towards Tower Bridge and try to end it up around there. Um, I'm gonna get a couple more shots on this final street and then head that way. Okay, right, let's head, let's head in that, that direction, that one, literally straight. I'm heading down towards um, embankment area and then I'm going to get the tube. Um, and then from the tube, I'm going to go towards Tower Bridge and then end it there, hopefully, and get some decent shots um, in that area before I, I head home decision that I'm going to walk um, to Tower Bridge instead just well why not I'm going to get some photos on the way and then when I get there I'll show you the photos I've taken because I've only got um, about eight minutes left of storage on the SD card for the GoPro so I don't want to waste that getting there so Tower Tower Bridge okay I'm down by London Bridge Station now I'm going to head towards Tower Bridge um, I've just got a really cool reflection shot of the shard. I'm not sure how the quality turned out because the wind was kind of moving the top layer of the water so it was like, you know, a little bit uh, disturbed. But the photos that I have taken since walking to London Bridge are on the screen now. Um, and then I'm going to finish off with some reflection shots around the shard and then also some shots around Tower Bridge. And then I'm going to head home because it's been an absolutely insanely eventful day my phone being left on the tube, me returning it, getting it back. And I do want to say thank you to everyone that helped me um, in that. But yeah, let's get a couple more shots and then, uh, then we'll head home. Okay, so just down here and to the right is Tower Bridge. Um, I'm going to put music over this part just purely because it's so fucking loud with the wind. And I don't want to like destroy your ears. So... Okay, got those at Tower Bridge. I'm going to get a bit closer and hopefully get my last final shot and then I'm going to head home. 
I'm down at Tower Bridge and I'm actually going to get like a really generic shot, which I don't normally get. I normally try and look for something different. And it is just literally that photo. It's quite nice sometimes just to take like touristy photos because it's just, you know, just kind of nice. And then I'm also just going to get like the straight plane shot of this as well. Ah, plane, plane. Yeah, you get what you have. You got the joke. Um, and then I'm going to get a couple of reflection shots um, just down here. I guess the whole point and the whole like idea of this video is to show you that you don't always need to have, you know, that big expensive camera like the Sony a7 III that I'd normally use. Um, and okay, it's not like a mega expensive camera, but you know, it is further outside of other people's budgets. And I remember when I first started, I was kind of like, oh, I can't take this photo, I can't do that type of photo purely because I don't have that type of camera. Well, I'm hoping I can prove to those people that think that wrong now with this. One of the reflection shots is actually here. If you look at the, the buildings here, you can see that. But in here, which I'm going to try and get. And I like it because there's loads of like double exposures. Now, if you go up here, you can get the same shot, but it's a little bit cleaner. But I like it from that angle because you get this like kind of weird double exposure. But I'm going to get this one as well because I'm here and I want to. So, bam. Oh, it's windy. I'm sorry. It's so windy. I have previously taken I have previously taken that photo before. Yes, I'm walking backwards to shield the camera from the wind so I can talk to you. I have taken that photo that's on the screen now previously, but I like it a lot, so I'll take it again. If you aren't already, maybe consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell so you get notified every time I do upload. I'm gonna be doing more POV and more comparison videos in terms of like cameras and stuff like that. So if that's something that interests you, then do hit that subscribe button. Um, yeah, for a like, drop a comment down below. Um, yeah, what do you think of the M50? Do you think it's a, a good camera? I personally think it's a badass budget camera. Um, yeah, with all that being said, create more, stress less, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.